PHP 7 now gives us the ability to use anonymous classes. Now you may be going, why would we want to create anonymous classes? Well, take for example a PHP framework. Now usually with the PHP framework, there would be a class and that class would build an object that represents our library. But you may only want to do that once and you may not want that class to be reinstantiated. So now we have the ability to have anonymous classes, which means we build the object and then the class itself is thrown away. It's not stored in memory and it can't be reinstantiated. It's anonymous. So that is why anonymous classes are actually very beneficial and they're very easy to set up in PHP 7. So I'm now going to create a variable and this variable is going to contain our library. So they target this variable and then they get access to our framework. So I'll just call this framework. Then I'm going to instantiate an object from a new anonymous class. Now this is now supported via the new keyword. Now usually you'd type new and then the class name that you're going to instantiate the object from. However, we are just gonna say class and we're going to open and close the parentheses this is an anonymous class what will happen is whatever we put inside of these parentheses our properties and methods will then build the object that object will get returned to this variable and the class will be deleted so our object will be left and that class can no longer be instantiated and that's actually kind of good for security reasons and also for other reasons as well because we don't need that class sitting in memory when we know full well that we only need to instantiate this framework once we only need to create one instance of the framework so now I can say create a new class a new anonymous class that cannot be called anywhere else in our program and now I can just type this out as I would any other class with public, private, and protected members. So I'll create a private property, and this one shall be read only, and it shall contain a read only value. And then I can have a public method if I wanted to. So I'm gonna create a public method and say function, and then I'm gonna give it a name of print, and then all I want to do is echo out from this object that I've created right here. And I'm going to target that private property read only and then end with a semicolon. Now, once I've done this, I can go ahead and add in an ending semicolon. Let's see if this has in fact been created without an error. Let's save it, hit refresh. There's no error. So now let's target the framework and then let's call up the print method. I'm going to save that and hit refresh. And it says, yep, yeah, there it is, the read-only value that came from this property. So it echoed that out, no problem. So it's just like any other class. It's just that it's anonymous. It cannot be called later on in the program. There's no way for me to instantiate another object from this class. And that's exactly what we've got right here. We have an anonymous class. Now, also, you can have static members as well. So I can have a static function right here. And you'll notice that you don't really need to type the public keyword in right here in PHP 7. It's automatically inferred as a public property or method if you don't define the access level for that member. So now I'm going to say this is a static function. I'm not applying the public keyword, nor am I doing it on the old method. And I can just say hello and that can just echo out hello and now that I've done this I can then copy this out and what we can do is we can target that static member right here hello save it hit refresh you'll notice it printed out the private property and then also we have the hello string being printed out by the static method now on top of that, now on top of that, your anonymous classes can have constructor functions. So let me go ahead and create this constructor function and it's going to receive a value for the read only private property. And we're gonna populate that property with the value that's given to the constructor function. And then I'm gonna target that read only property. And then I'm going to assign the value passed in to our 
argument. And now I'm just going to delete this out. So I'm going to leave this property unpopulated. Now, how do we pass a value to this argument? Well, we do that right here where we say new class and then we pop in the brackets. And this then allows us to pass values to a constructor function. So let me provide the parameter read only param. So now we have this parameter and this parameter will be sent to this argument right here. And then what will happen is we can use that argument inside of the constructor function. And what it will do is it will then target the read only property and it will assign that value. So now that private property will be equal to that value. All right. So now what I want to do is paste that all in and save it. And then I want to go back and hit refresh. So now you'll notice that what it said was read only param. And I'll also get rid of the static output as well. So I'll get rid of that. And you'll see it says read only param. So that parameter was passed to that argument. And then we printed the value of that property out. And also your anonymous classes can inherit from other classes that are available to this script. So I can also create a class called my OBJ, and then I can create some properties and methods in here. I'll just create a public property that is hello. And all it'll do is it will just have the string say hello. And what I can do now is I can tell my anonymous class to extend its functionality to extend all of these properties and methods with the properties and methods within this class. So all I need to do is say, declare the new anonymous class. We have our properties and methods, but I want to say right here extends. And then I'm going to say my OBJ. So that is the class that we want to pull in all the properties and methods from. And then what I can do is echo out and target the framework object. And then I can target the hello property. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say target the hello property, save it, hit refresh. And you'll notice it returns back the string say hello because this object contains this property right here that has the string say hello. And finally, you can also apply interfaces as well. So I can say interface and then we need to give it a name of reg. And then what this will do is it will check to see if there is certain methods on our anonymous class. So I'll say I want to make sure that there is a public method and I will type in the keyword public. So I'm checking to see if there is a public method called print and it's not going to take any arguments. So now what I need to do is say, right, apply this check to our anonymous class. So in our case, we have our anonymous class. It extends the my OBJ class. And then I want to say it implements the interface reg, which will check to see if there is a public function or method called print. And it does meet that requirement. I didn't need to type the public keyword when I declared this method. So you can infer that this is public access by omitting the public keyword. And then I can go ahead and save this and hit refresh. And you'll notice it says say hello. So it did an error. However, if that method was not applied, well, then the interface is going to check this anonymous class to see if it has that method, which it doesn't. And what will happen is you'll get an error. It'll say your anonymous class contains one abstract method and must therefore be declared abstract or implement the remaining methods, which is it wants the print method. So it errors. So if we meet those requirements, we won't get an error. So there you go. That's anonymous classes that can be instantiated only once via the lifetime of the program.